Hallelujah. Come on, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might, with every breath in you, lift your voice to your maker and shout hallelujah. Help me whisper to your neighbor. Say, to neighbor. I can't hear you. Say, neighbor. Today is a great day. And after today, there will be a testimony. If you believe that, then why not just wave your hands to him, child of God, wherever you are. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holiness. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Worship His holiness. Sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Sing like never before. Worship. Oh, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful. Name it is the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is! Yes, what a beautiful name! Nothing can stand against. What a beautiful name it is! The name. what I love the most. My sin was great, but your love was greatest. So what can separate us now? What a beautiful name. Raise your voice. Lift your heart. Precious Jesus. Hey, nothing can stand against us. What a powerful name! What a powerful name! His good power above principalities. His good power above all souls. Can heal from HIV, can heal from sickness and diseases. What a healing name! What a healing name it is. The name of Jesus. Lift your hands. 
signs and blessings. Raise your voice to the God. For there's no power that contends and compares with Him, Jesus. I will bless you, Lord. This God now wow. This God now why This God now wow. This God now This God. Jesus, this God, this Father, I never see, I never see you alone. And the drama, they are actually visually impaired. If you want to see them more, you are going to come for white on Tuesday. We are inviting them. Automatic invitation for them. Now, this is the youth group. We are having our youth week next week. So if you have a youth in the house, you are a youth. You have a youth that you have employed. Now, jam your hands together and scream unto the Lord. Now, this month, or this week, it's been tagged, you can sit down please. This week is being themed relevance. So we are starting next week Sunday, and we have several programs that is happening concurrently. All right, on Tuesday, the 23rd of this month, we'll be having white. Worship him in the evening. Please, we want you to come with a touch of white on that day. It's going to be an awesome experience. Tuesday, Tuesday, the 23rd, white. Time is 5 p.m. Hallelujah. Next Sunday is our youth Sunday, and immediately after the service, for the first time, our Atsoporo youth will be presenting to you what they have in store. It's not um, it's time for us. We want to tell you that we don't want to beg you for transport again. We want to showcase what we can actually do. And we have entrepreneurs among our youth. So there's going to be an exhibition after service on Sunday in this um, yeah, outside. So please, that is our money. Bring a lot of money. Bring a lot of money next um, Sunday. And buy. There will be a lot of things to buy. Um, all youth please um, that are entrepreneurs, you're expected to come and
and bring showcase what you have. It's just a thousand naira, and because of this, all you will be waiting behind after service today. All you, whether entrepreneurs or not. All right. Also on Friday, we want to treat ourselves in a dinner. So every youth place, even if you are youth, you youth at class, we are inviting you. Also, you can be there for our dinner, and it's going to be a wonderful one. On Saturday, we are inviting you also for hiking. We are going hiking first time in First World Gospel Church at Sokoro. We are going on the mountain. Jesus did that, so we also want to go on the mountain. We have a prayer and we come down. We come in the power of the Holy Spirit. Please, all the youth in the house, stay behind and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This song says, it turned it. Somebody did not hear me. This song says, it turned it. All the plans of the enemies concerning your life. God is turning. Ah, they don't believe it. I'm not getting a witness in the house this morning. All those evil plans of the enemy concerning your life, God is turning them around for your. Ah, I'm not filling this house. I'm not filling this house. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it around for your. Somebody say, For my good. Say, For my good. It's hard. 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 It's hard.
Children, you know what the Lord is telling us this morning? Joy, singing and dancing will not cease from the midst of them that know their God. Hallelujah. Let's just go ahead and praise the Lord this morning. Just give God praise. Just appreciate Him. He just gave you a prophetic declaration. He turns your mourning into dancing. He turns your sorrow into joy. It's the time to say thank you. Forget the signs. Forget the things around. Just look unto the Lord and give praise to Him. Let us praise our God this morning. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give praise unto you. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Our Father, in this season, O oh God, of attracting us to do your business, we know what you are saying is that if we yield to you, you're already committed to doing our business. And your business is to make sure that it is well with us. The Bible says, tell the righteous, it shall be well with him. And in Psalm 138, verse 8, pastors had been looking at this. You bring a word to this church that you perfect all that concerns us. No wonder we start to sing and dance. Even ahead of whatever we can see or whatever we can get. Knowing that our God is faithful and that he is true. Father, we give you praise this morning. Help us, O Lord God, to go all the way with you. Not just, O God, Father, to shout and then go back and get into the things that annoy you and are unpleasing to you. I want to pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, this connection with you will take us to higher heights. Take us to greater commitments. Make us know you more and more and love and serve you more, O God. And when we do this, we know that, Lord, you rejoice more with us and reveal more of your presence to our lives. Thank you, Father, for doing this, for your faithful and kind God. And as we hear your word this morning, just consolidate the things you started to do, and the people of God will rejoice. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Before you sit down, just take four people and say congratulations. The chains in your life are broken. Sorrow is turning to joy. Mourning is turning into dancing. Doubt is turning into faith. That is what God is doing in our midst at this time. Just go ahead and praise the Lord. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Choir, we thank God for you. And we're trusting that more and more of the Spirit of the Lord will move in your life. Youth, we thank God for you. And we're trusting that you allow God to move more and more in your life. Adults, we thank God for you. Because there are great things that the Lord is doing in our midst in these times. Blessed be the name of our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. I understand that our brethren who are called the revival group that sang to us at the beginning, and they were part of those setting the mode of worship and praise. Today could just be a day when we'll sing, dance, and praise all day. And God will say, children, go on. But we must get some time and hear the word also. Those brethren are impaired. They cannot see too well. I don't know whether they're still around. Some of them are, cannot even see at all. But they are seen in the spirit, you understand that. They know what God is doing. And when you look at people like that, you go and rethink you who see and say, what is this physical sight for? And I pray that God will continue to bless their ministry in Jesus' name. Our brother Harry led them, brother Simeon Akbri, and brother Yemi Adebiri. Are they still around? Wave if you're there or they've gone. Amen. We are going to be connecting with them as we go along later. And we really thank God that they took some time to be with us today. This morning, I'm bringing a word to you, ancient landmarks. Ancient landmarks. And I hope, Brother Ogo, you have the outline. You're going to help us with some of these things. You know that the theme for April 2019 is divine rescue. We take that from Jude, verse 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garments spotted by flesh. Today's message... We'll make us look at some three verses very quickly. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2, Proverbs 22, 28, and Ezra chapter 3 verse 12. In Second Timothy 2, 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Proverbs 22 verse 28. The Bible says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Ezra chapter 3 verse 12. But many 
of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers, who were ancient men and had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy. It's my trust that God will bless the reading of his word to our hearts in the name of Jesus. We're just going to be looking at some few things that should challenge us to understand the call of God for each one of us at this time. The landmark of the ancients. I was talking to Dr. Uh, Rissum Bankole yesterday night. For those of us who watched uh, the NTA, I was on the television and was talking about um, the environment and all that between 9 and 10. And I got home around 11 o'clock. It was late in the night. And our daughter, Rissum, who was presented to those who came to live in spring this morning, uh, started to wonder, uh, what are we doing with all these things that we call local technology? And I was going to pass some message to her by one of the platforms. And I said, go and check your WhatsApp. She came and she scratched her head and said, Daddy, you know, I observed that all these ODs call this thing WhatsApp. It's not WhatsApp. It's WhatsApp. <laughs> Hello? You know, whenever you think of these things, you remember all these young people and all their what's up, what's up, what's up. Go and open what's up. How many of us call this thing what's up? You see that they are gray-haired people. You see, you see them. You see them. And when you do that, these young girls will be looking, what is wrong with these ancient, these oldies, this old school? The thing is not what's up. It's not what's up. It is what? What's up? That is how it is. When you have a mix of all these things happening, you know, the old, connecting with the young, with the new, and all that. And it is, it, it is possible to get mixed up at times. And all the week I was reading scriptures, I was looking at Proverbs, and the Lord was talking about the ancients. You remember that we mentioned Ezra chapter 3 verse 12 actually last week? When in the building of the temple over and over again, after the people came back from captivity, you know, it looked like something was getting revived. Those who did not know the old temple started to shout for thanks and praise. But he said the ancients who knew the old temple, rather than shout, were weeping. Because they knew what was the quality of the old and so it is important in the midst of all the glittering things that we see now and the things that are happening, we should wait a bit and say, how did the ancients feel these things? What were there in those days that were lost, that we should not allow to be lost because they're essential and crucial? That's the place I'm going about the ancients' view of the call of God in the things that are paramount in the heart of God. And I was looking at lives of people like Amy Semple McPherson. For those of us who don't know, that was a lady who started Foursquare. She was born in the early uh, part of uh, the uh, 1900s and all that. By 1921, she had really gotten the call to start Foursquare. And 1922, in the year my dad was born, 1923 and all that, she had started to build the Angelist Temple in Los Angeles. I've been in that temple. I've seen the commitment of a woman who gave everything. In the midst of all the things that people said about her, the problems she had, Amy Semple married up to about four times. And it's good to remember all these things because in the midst of the humanness of our lives, I don't know who is here, that the devil is telling today, you cannot achieve anything, you cannot do much. Look what your life in the past had been. Lives that had been used of God tell us that all we need to do is recognize the call of God, recognize what God wants to do with our lives, and yield to him. Somebody is going to rise up from the dregs of the past this morning and say, he has turned my mourning into dancing. He has given joy in the place of sorrow, and I'm going to serve him all the way. That's why all the joy that we started to feel in the beginning must abide so that you connect with this God who wants to work with your life. So Amy Semple would tell us about the thoughts of the ancients about giving everything to the service of God no matter what the world is saying and no matter how you feel. By the time she died, whereas the Angelus Temple was valued at about $2 million at that time, which would be about some $15, $20 million today, 
She had only about $10,000 in her account. A woman who was completely sold over to the will of God. Going around and saving souls. We're talking about divine rescue. Giving food and all that. We're talking about reaching out to the world that is lost. And reaching them spiritual and body. That was what Amy Semple McPherson did. And we think about people like Apostle Paul. Who in the midst of bringing up men and women. Young people particularly. People like Timothy. Like Titus. Philemon and all the others could show what exactly the heart of God is about making sure that the right uh, message is passed from generation to generation. And it's there I started to think about it. When we talk about landmarks, particularly when you look at Proverbs 22, verse 28, when the Bible says, remove not the ancient landmarks which thy father had set, it was talking about Naira and Kobo, as it were, of those times. It was talking about business. But if God could be so detailed about financial things, you can imagine the aspects of spiritual business that God wants to do. No wonder when our sister, uh, uh, um, what's her name now? Um, Ayidu came here earlier, and she was talking about spiritual business. I said, that's it. It is a morning of spiritual reckoning in the name of Jesus. It's a morning when you sit down and say, where is my heart actually? And do I understand where the heart of God is? I'm looking at ancient landmarks from the point of doing spiritual business this morning. And it's the type that will make you be like those ancients. Who saw the temple that was attempted to be built again? And they were saying, look, it doesn't compare in any way with what we knew was in the heart of God. I say in the name of Jesus, you will not settle for mediocrity in the name of Jesus. Particularly in the things of God, you will not settle for second best. You will go out for the plan of God. You will see the purpose of God and go all the way for it. Like all these people who were examples to us as ancients knowing the will of God. The key thing to do is to commit to evangelism and discipleship. And somebody has got to understand it. And that was why Paul was telling Timothy, the things that you have heard of me in the midst of so many people, in the midst of many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who after they have understood it, will go and do it to others also. That's the challenge that we have. And that's why this morning, as I was looking back, I said we've done quite some work in this place. When this church started, you know, the different people who would come around, would, it wasn't about pastors only. It wasn't about a section only coming. Everyone will come on a Sunday. You remember those days of wearing our t-shirts? Red, green, and all that. How many of us remember that? I pray those times will come back again. And the show will come back because that is when we'll be fully engaged in this business of divine rescue. That is when God in his reckoning will know that we understand what the ancient thoughts and the ancient landmarks are. And we're having spiritual benchmarks that make us happy that we're doing the thing that God says. We had shared in this place sometime. Three steps for winning and keeping the lost. That's where all begins. The message today is uh, ancient landmarks. But there are three things that would show that you are along the line of those landmarks. I don't know how many of us remember this. You, you may not even be able to see it. Or God put it on the screen. Because this is, the, this is the paper that I have there. That's the next slide. How many of us remember this? I'll go to the next slide. Is it not opening? That's it. How many of us remember that material? I have a copy of it here. Do you still have it somewhere? If you have a copy of this, put up your hand. Let me see. <laughs> Pastor Dideji, where is your own? Hey, somewhere in the house. Any other person apart from Pastor Dideji? We shared this some time ago. And I'm going to make sure that we make more copies of this. Because this is what we are talking about. To really get into the business of winning souls, retaining souls, and encouraging them to become people like those that Paul saw through Timothy, who will also go and do the same thing to others. So my objective this morning is to connect with these ancients and really look at the things that God expects of us. 
There's so much here, but I deliberately put it together in this material so that anybody who wants this can go to the multimedia department and collect the, uh, uh, um, you know, the presentation. Take this and go and study. Look at it and see what you are doing and what you are not doing and fill the gaps. And I believe God will help you in Jesus' name. There are three things outlined when you talk about getting engaged in this business. Divine rescue. One, getting a person to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Very basic. We have situations where people come to church and they just imagine that being in church is all that matters. But they've not met Jesus. We're going to clarify that in a moment. Following up a new Christian from the point of salvation to Christian maturity. That is the next step. And then setting the new Christian in fellowship and in service in a good church. Let's start from where it all begins and where it should begin. If you're here in this church this morning and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have not connected, please listen properly. This is your time. And there's a point we will get to that you would realize what you need to do. Do not argue with the Spirit of God. Take the step and you will not be the same as you came into this church from now on. And for eternity, you will live to thank God that you came to this service this morning. Getting a person to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know that we are all creatures of God, but not all children of God. Not all really connected to God as we should. So there's a point that is the responsibility of those who know, because that was what happened to you, to be able to get to others that you want to make experience this divine rescue. You want them to know that they must get out of the life of sin, the life of uh, confusion that they are in, and come to the love and the plan of God. So the first thing that any man, any woman wants to know is that God's love and plan exist for him or her. Hello? Cast your mind back to the time when you gave your life to Christ. I remember when I did. That night, September 11, 1977. What struck my heart was that God had been waiting for me to enter this eternal plan. I went to church. I did different things. I ran around in Christian meetings and all that. I remember student life in Unilag at that time. I played around the Lagos Varsity Christian Union. I made friends with deeper life people and so on. Pastor Adeboe taught me in the prelim. Pastor Kumi taught me. We went to eat their biscuit and their uh, cake at some time. But we didn't get to know Jesus Christ. But the moment I did in 1977, I knew I had entered the plan of God for my life. Are you sure you are in the plan of God this morning? Understand God's love. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not do what? Will not perish but have everlasting life. It applies to you. If you do not have Jesus that God gave, you will perish if you die. And I'm not just carrying you. That's what the Bible says. But God does not want you to perish. Look at John chapter 3 verse 17. God does not want the world to be condemned by Jesus Christ, but that through him, the whole world will be saved. Amen? So you must appreciate the plan of God for you. Everyone has a plan. In John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come. Why? I have a plan that is good for you. An eternal plan that nobody can confuse. But you cannot experience that plan because you're a sinner. I'm talking to somebody directly now. And I'm talking to those who have given their life to Christ, 1919, 19 whatever. To understand that this is what the lost world had been waiting for you to tell them. Sinful man cannot experience the plan of God no matter how well he's dressed. No matter how well groomed he may look. He needs to know Jesus. She needs to know Jesus. Because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And it goes on to say, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is the graphics of it. Let's look at the next script. Oh God, please quickly, you have to move with me, whoever is at the screen. Go to the presentation and let's look at the next script quickly. Go 
to the next one. It's the one that has the, uh, um, the, the graphics of the Holy God and the sinful man. You have to flow with me. See that picture there? Holy God, sinful man. Oftentimes, the attempt starts with sinful man trying to reach to God. He bears a Christian name. He comes to church every day. He gives alms to the poor. He, do, he tries not to lie. He does all the different things. That arrow is all trying to show that I'm trying to reach God. Can he get to God? You look at your own life. When you tried all those things before you knew the truth, did you get to God? That is why some people had made some uh, um, new, year, new Year resolution. And hardly had the year gotten one quarter away. And they have forgotten it. They are waiting for December again to start all afresh. No effort of man can reach the holy God. The gulf is so big that you cannot jump over it. That you cannot get through it. Except to recognize that God made a, 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 a kind of move to bring you to himself. It is only Jesus that can save from sins. You need to understand that he died for you. Scarcely for a friend will a man die. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, but God commended his love towards us. And that while we're yes, sinners, Christ died for us. You need to understand Christ's resurrection. God planned it that he would take you out of death to life. You need to see Jesus Christ as the only way to God. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come unto the Father except how? Except how? That is why we don't have any argument with anybody. Not with religion, not with science, not with anything. If there is anyone to argue, go and argue with Jesus. It's Jesus who said it. If I repeat this, I'm not concocting anything. I'm just repeating what Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes unto the Father except through who? You can only pray that that person will understand it. Just like God made you understand it at the right time. And see what God did in the next graphics. I need to show that. So you see how God can reach to man. The bridge is who? It has to be. The initiative is whose? It was God reaching down to man. And that reaching was very, very complete. Hallelujah. I thought somebody would just clap his hands and say, thank God for the love of God. Are you getting the message? It is a complete, complete deliverance that God did. He put a bridge there. What no effort could achieve. God put the bridge of the cross of Jesus where sins are forgiven, where men can now walk in confidence no matter whatever they are done in their lives. It didn't matter whether you killed. It didn't matter whether you aborted. It didn't matter whether you stole. It didn't matter whether you lied. It didn't matter whether you, 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 you just ran away. At the right time, God found you. Is this time to start to ask yourself, have I really been found of God? Or am I still running Am I still pretending? Am I still doing cabo cabo? I come to church. I look somehow. But I know that my heart is not there. Because I'm just continuing in my sins. Today, God will help you. And you'll be able to reach out to that loving arm of God. And receive forgiveness in the name of Jesus. That is why it must get to a point where we must each as individuals. Receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. To experience God's love and plan for our lives. Until you do that, you can only be hearing about it or imagining it. It's when you really accept the love of God that you can connect. You must receive Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, as many as received him, as many as believed him, these are the ones that he has made to become who? The sons and the daughters of God. Until you receive Christ, you cannot be a son of God. You cannot be a daughter of God. Come to church a million times. Be at the best of Christian names. You can only just be around those who are talking and experiencing God. You can't have it until you enter. And it's free. Only to be sure that you make the step. So you must receive Jesus Christ by faith. Open up your heart. It is by faith. Just believing that he who has said he's waiting at the door of your heart and is knocking. Just as the message on the AIT program said this morning. A knock on the door. You're hearing the voice of God. Just open the door of your heart. And by faith, say Jesus coming. Nicodemus came to Jesus. How can a man be born again? How can, how, how, how can a man enter into the kingdom of God? Jesus Christ told him, you must be born again. And that's what it means. 
to be forgiven of your sins. To confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that is why, you know, whenever you look at it, it's like a coached thing. It's like uh, a, a, a taped program. When we were in the University of Lagos in those days, we used to make jest of the SU people. Don't mind those people. They would go and start to teach themselves how to go around and tell people about Christ. They would teach them what to say to people. And when they come, they would be repeating the thing to you. And meanwhile, we were engineering students, medical students, history students. What were we doing in those classes where we were then? Receiving coaching on how to behave in particular ways. Is that not so? That's how I behave as an engineer today. That's why doctors, you had the testimony of a doctor earlier, who behave as doctors. You are indoctrinated. You are taught. And when it comes to really getting to understand how to behave as a Christian, we tell them as if they are doing something wrong. Until some few months after I left the university and then received Jesus Christ truly. Oh, so this is what these people were doing. You have to be taught. Just like we are being taught in this place this morning. You have to understand it and follow the program because that's the plan of God for you. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, go back to those ancient landmarks of understanding the message of God and giving it to the world. Simple message as we are bringing out here. Take this message, look at the verses and all that. The verses remain the same forever. They don't change. That is why one good part of it is when that man you are talking to says, now I understand. Because the Spirit of God has been preparing him. Forget it. It's not your beautiful English or your good package or whatever. Those could be con co contributions to what has happened. But I'd like you to know that God had been going after that heart as he's going after hearts that we have prayed for here this morning. As he has sent some people be be before you to those hearts to put some seeds. And perhaps all that you were just doing as I'm doing this morning is just to water the ground so that that seed will really germinate and start to work. Hello? It gets to the point when you've given the message. A person now says, oh, this is what they have been saying since. Now I recognize that I'm a sinner. And I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm tired of my sins. I don't want the sin nature to rule me anymore. I want Jesus to take control of my life. So that from now on I will live as a child of God. And I'm sure there are some people here this morning that way. Hello? That's why we come to church. It will be sad to come into this place and go the way you came, carrying the load of sin, carrying the burden of sin. And who knows what might happen to you? Three, four Sundays ago, we were rounding up service. I sat in this place and I was just to come up here and make an announcement. And the Spirit of God said to me, some five people must not leave this place because they are not born again. And it could be very dangerous. I love the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is a person. He speaks just like I talk to my friend or talk to my wife or talk to my daughter. He speaks and when we start to understand him, we know what he says and we know that he's speaking. Do you hear the voice of God? My sheep hear my voice. We learned that this morning, didn't we? From John chapter 10 verse 27. They hear me and they follow me. They understand what I'm saying and they follow me. The voice of Jesus is the voice of the Spirit. I pray you hear that voice this morning. I heard the voice. And I came here and I said some five people can't go away from here. People were just looking. The devil is a very, very bad devil. Even when you understand, he doesn't want you to move because he wants you to come to hell. But you will not go there in Jesus' name. We finished service that morning. I went back to pray just to thank God for what he has done. Hey, did I feel bad that nobody stood up? Who? It's not my business. I did all that God told me to do. But God said, go and meet the people who are in the chamber. And still tell them, don't go out of this place. Oh. How many of the elders were in that place that day? Brother, please, where were you? How many gave their life to Christ after that day? But Wilson, how many? Did you remember? Bro, peace, where are you? You follow them up. I think there are at least seven. Do not leave this place this morning without contacting Jesus. I know you are here. The Spirit of God brought you here because today the work of the devil must be terminated in your life. And it's so simple to do. Project the prayer that people who want to accept Jesus Christ pray. Just put it up. 
Multimedia, I don't like the way you are, you are not following this, but go ahead. That, the next one. There's that prayer. Find it out. I think it's on page 8, or I don't know which of, which of the slides. You'll see it. Say after me this prayer. Lord Jesus, I want you to shout it, everybody. Everybody. Lord Jesus. Some people are not shouting. I leave him. Just let him be talking. Can you, either for yourself or because of others, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, I pray. Ha, 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 ha. That was the prayer I prayed 40 years ago. Simple as that. My sins were forgiven. Jesus came into my life. All that has been since then had been a growth in grace. Getting to know him better. And working with him on a day-to-day -day basis. How many have genuinely prayed that prayer before? Here. Yeah. That prayer, you prayed it. It is not time for humility and to say, Pastor, I don't want you to see my hand. Don't, put your hand up if you have prayed it before. Whether yesterday or last week or last year or 20 years ago. While these hands are up, if you're, please put it up, put it up. If your hand is not up, stand up wherever you are. Stand up. If your hand is not up. I see one here. There are more than one. I see three now. There are still more. Two or three. Please help me, church. Is the hand paining us more? Do it for Jesus now, please. If your hand is not up, don't just now sneak it up because then none they get me again. You are doing this thing because there's a place you are going. Any other person whose hand, has not, whose hand is not up? Please stand up. Very crucial moment. Don't argue it. It is a decisive moment. The, the devil is cheating you. But God is saying, child, you cannot continue this way. I have come to save you today. If you are standing, come out here. Are these faces not lovely? The devil cannot take you to hell. He cannot take me to hell. The devil cannot take you to hell. You have business with God. The devil cannot take you to hell. Come, as many as still must come. Please clap for them as many as will come. The devil cannot take you to hell. Just stand up for now. Just stand up. Amen. The message must come to a close very quickly. Do you know what you did? If Jesus tarries, 40 years from here, you'll be preaching these messages and preaching it. Did you hear what I said? If Jesus does not come back and take you, take me, take all the people that believe him home, you'll be alive to tell people, now, so I go church. I just, then just invite me. Now in one man come, they talk. I don't know how I come to altar. But I accept Jesus because he explained it in. And you will remain as a child of God from today in the name of Jesus. Church, let's just praise God on behalf of these people. Let's wave our hands. Come, come. There's time for you, darling. There's a place for you in the name of Jesus. You know what we're going to do again at this time? I don't mind stopping this message here now. I have four minutes or so. But this is where the message is. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer again and ask you to follow ministers of the gospel. Your life will not remain the same again. Did you hear what I said? And what just happened to you today? You qualify to go and get this tape and this message from our multimedia and go and study it and start to do it to other people. Did you understand what I'm saying? From here on, you start to grow in the knowledge of God and the power of God. You are not the same anymore from today. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. 
Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of my life from now on. Make me, make me a soul winner. Make me one who can establish souls. Make me one who can stand as a child of God every day of my life. Stand up and let's tell the Holy Spirit that this morning. That's the much we have that we can do with the time that is in our hands. So please just tell the Holy Spirit, come to you this morning and I thank you. I give you praise and I worship you. Take my life. Use it to your glory. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In all the places I've failed as a Christian, please forgive me. Let there be a fresh beginning from today. Glorify your name in me. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Father, the ancient landmarks cannot be removed. They are the marks of doing serious business with you, even in the realm of the Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus that you remind us of these things. And we will not be the generation that will move the landmarks. We will not lower the standards. In all the places we will fail, oh God, give, give us strength to go afresh to do your will and your purpose. And the joy of serving the Lord will certainly be our strength. And we will see it and give glory to you continually. Thank you, God, for this morning. And for as many as you have made to understand this message. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.